What's up everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. How about that? Two videos in a week. In today's video, I'm gonna share six ways for you to stop hating Gutenberg. Let's dive right in. No, it's not the classic editor. Let's stop saying that over and over again. Let's move on and let's start with step number one. Clear your mind, be open for change. Yeah, I know that sounds so la-di-da and so zen-like mindfulness state, but you really have to be ready for change. I think I know a lot of people who just don't want to use Gutenberg because they're like, man, I don't want to learn something else. This is my workflow. I've already had it down. I don't want to develop for, work, uh, for Gutenberg. I don't want to learn JavaScript, all this stuff. They're just angry that there's change. And I think that within change comes some chaos, and out of that chaos, there's a new and better uh, path, hopefully politics and communication aside. <laughs> Number two for getting yourself used to using Gutenberg, you gotta find a theme that plays really well with Gutenberg. And for me, that was the missing link. I was trying to use Gutenberg on some other themes that I used, I tried to use it on 2019. It just wasn't right, it just didn't look right. The things I was doing just wasn't formatted well, and that's because the themes weren't really ready to support Gutenberg. Until I found the theme Chaplin, I've done a video about that, I'll link it up here. When you find a theme that connects the dots between the visual builder in the back end and the visual components of the front end with Gutenberg, then it really starts to make sense and you start to enjoy building sites. That's why I'm excited for Anders Norn to lead the 2020 theme, which will be coming with WordPress in November. Number three, take time to understand the tooling around Gutenberg, the new toolbars, the new options, the new screens, the new panes, the new pop-ups, whatever it is. Take some time. It's part of number one where you have to kind of be ready for change, you're ready to adopt it. You gotta spend a little bit of time learning this stuff or you're not really giving it a fair shot. Now, that aside the fact that the when Gutenberg first rolled out, it was in its infancy and there were some major problems with it. Now it's gotten better, it's gotten a lot more mature. Uh, but if you spend some time in these three areas, this will really help you. Number one, spend some time understanding the two tabs of document versus blocks. And that's sort of something that is a little hurdle to get over, but it takes some understanding. So you have the new documents tab, which is all of the uh, options for the particular page or post that you're looking at. Simple things like draft, publish, template style, that kind of thing. And then the blocks page or blocks tab, which is all about the particular block that you're looking at. So looking at. So if you click on a block, you can see all of the options available to modify that block on the right hand side. Number two in this area that has really helped me out was, you know, when you're trying to hover over a paragraph in a post uh, that you're editing, one of the biggest things that I hear people complain about online is they get all these little UI stuff that hovers over it, all the formatting options. You can stick that formatting bar to the top of your editor screen so that it's not in the way. And that's like 90% of the complaints that I hear on Twitter is like, I can't click around because these things are hovering. And this took me a while to figure that out as well. Stick that toolbar to the top and it won't get in your way. Number three, it's still pretty finicky to get in there and click on a particular block. Use the block navigation pane or pop up so that you can navigate the blocks really easily. You can click on the exact block that you want so you can find those options. So those three things right there has really helped me just get used to using Gutenberg so I don't get angry and smash my keyboard. Number four, install the actual Gutenberg plugin. Regardless of the reviews and the two stars that you see there, uh, it took me some time to understand this. I was getting frustrated with the Gutenberg options that were just built into core WordPress and totally forgetting that, yeah, they're committing new features and enhancements to the Gutenberg plugin. I should probably install that so I can give it a fair shake. And I think if you're anybody who's in the consulting space and you're still just using the classic editor plugin for your clients, Give yourself some, some uh, education, give yourself some headway to see what's coming for the future of Gutenberg and WordPress, install that plugin, even on a test site, and maybe give it a chance that way. Again, this kind of goes back to number one, you gotta be open for change, but use the core Gutenberg plugin and that'll help you get adjusted. There's also some experimental features in there that you can check out. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Number five, and again, this was a big one when it came to me using Chaplin, try other Gutenberg block plugins. 
And I, there's a ton of them already. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's so many options and I start to get worried, like I'm gonna install all these plugins, I'm gonna install these blocks. In the future, what are we doing? Are we installing blocks? Are we installing plugins? Where do they come from? I get it. But when I use the Chaplin theme, I was using the CoBlox plugin, which adds a whole bunch of other styled blocks and uh, just formatting choices for me and the way I can format my content. It's pretty awesome and it's lightweight and it works great with the Chaplin theme, which now you have to just make sure you have a theme that works well with it. This one is put out by, uh, well, it's owned now by GoDaddy. It was originally developed by Richard Tabor. He is still um, on that project and, and developing on it, and it's a solid, solid plugin. It's really nice to add some more features to your Gutenberg experience. It's not a tumor. Number six, and maybe this is just the last icing on the cake. At this time, in the month September 2019, Gutenberg is not a page builder. So there's a lot of people out there going, I don't need another page builder. All right, Gutenberg's, uh, uh, Beaver Builder's fine, Elementor's fine, I don't need Gutenberg. Gutenberg isn't a page builder right now. A lot of the stuff that they're talking about is expanding Gutenberg beyond the editor uh, and the content section of your WordPress site, but it's not a full-fledged page builder, and that's a good thing. In other words, when I was using Chaplin, I could build a page, I could build and customize a homepage and make it whatever style I wanted, but I wasn't bogged down in like layouts and margins and padding. And if I tweak this over here, do I have to modify some CSS and uh, looking at white space and just getting paralyzed by all the options. The really good thing about Gutenberg, at least in the state that it's in right now with the proper theme, is you do have flexibility, but you don't get lost in like, where do I put all this stuff? You know, once you reach that, that learning curve. So again, I'll just say this for the record, Gutenberg is not your Beaver Builder, your Elementor, your Site Origin Page Builder. It's not Divi, it's not Visual Composer, it's not Breezy, it's not Oxygen, it's not Thrive Themes, it's not Page Builder Sandwich, and it's not your Conductor Plugin. All right, everybody, I know, yes, the politics, the communication, it all sucked, right? The rollout, it sucked. A lot of us get angry about it. A lot of us are still angry about it. And a lot of people, at least I know in my Twitter thread, are looking at other CMSs because of it. Now they're like, hey, I don't feel like I'm a part of this uh, software anymore, and I'm gonna look to other areas. And that's super unfortunate. It's super unfortunate that it happened. It's unfortunate we lose some talented people and that there's a mark on this community, but the fortunate thing is, is it will bring in new blood, I hope, that people will now look at Gutenberg as an opportunity, they can see some things in motion here, and either develop new features, plugins, or just generally be familiar with how WordPress is evolving over time. And in about a year from now, we're gonna have new blood here, and it's gonna be people who are, who are inspired by Gutenberg and JavaScript and all of this stuff and this decoupled editing experience and block experience that uh, Gutenberg is providing. Heck, I've been really enjoying it with Chaplin. I'm pumped for 2020. I think I'll be able to build super lean sites without all of the other plugins. When I don't need to be a page builder, I, I can just bring in Gutenberg and a great theme and make things super lightweight. I'm doing it now. I have a couple sites out there with like three plugins installed and it's awesome. Still not gonna install Jetpack though. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> All right, everybody. It's plugintut.com, plugintut.com. Slash subscribe to join that mailing list. We'll see you in the next episode.